Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this beautiful January morning. I hope you're well and managing it this time. We're delighted to have you with us as we celebrate, and we'll begin by listening to our first hymn. Thank you. Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Living God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated and let us now listen to the reading of the word. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb 
on the day of the assembly, when you said, if I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, they are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A psalm read responsibly by half verse. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge. But anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge, since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So, by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family, 
and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their failing, of their falling, I will never eat meat so that I might not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear. It soothes our sorrows, heals our wounds, and drives away our fear. It makes the wounded spirit whole and calms the troubled breast. Is manna to the hungry soul and to the weary rest. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. They went to Capernaum. And when the Sabbath came, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I build my shield and hiding place, my never failing treasury with boundless stores of grace. Let the word of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Words. Well, we hear them all the time. Turn down that music. Put the light out when you leave a room. Hang up your clothes. And so it goes. I imagine your day, like mine, is often filled with words. Words from the radio these days from TV, from friends, family, colleagues at work, from salespersons, neighbors, from subway platforms here in Toronto, and the GPS unit in your car. We are inundated with words. We are so bombarded with words that sometimes, if you're like me, you'd like to muzzle the speakers. I find myself turning down radios, asking the kids to please turn the TV down over and over again. And I can really give that GPS woman a nasty look as she tells me one more time to make a U-turn. And I don't, usually. And that gets me into trouble, I admit. But words, our world can be overflowing with words. And we endure them week in and week out. And we long for some peace and quiet on the weekend. And then we come here 
to church, to a sanctuary on Sunday. And lo and behold, more words. On Sunday, we even celebrate words. We celebrate the words of Jesus Christ, God's word to the world, like today. And today, we'll be focusing on Jesus' words as he begins his ministry, as he engages demons. Jesus' words, unlike the endless stream of words that challenge us all week, his words have power and authority, power to bring healing and wholeness, peace and conviction. His words speak, hopefully, to our battered ears and our battered lives. His words speak to calm, to direct, equip, and encourage us for another noisy week. And in today's gospel, we enter into the gospel of Mark. Mark has no birth narrative, no childhood stories of Jesus. Mark begins with John the Baptist preparing the way with his preaching and with the baptism of Jesus and then jumps immediately into Jesus' calling of the disciples and the beginning of his ministry. And that's where we are today, the beginning of Jesus' ministry. And so how does it begin? Well, it begins on the Sabbath. In a town tucked away in the shores of the Sea of Galilee, Jesus and his followers entered the synagogue in Capernaum, where he begins to teach in words that were given the people's response to what he said, straight, direct, confident, and loaded with power. What's interesting is that we don't hear the content of Jesus' preaching. It's almost as if Mark is saying the content isn't really that important. In Mark, we rarely know what Jesus taught. What we know is how he taught, and as one who had authority, not like the scribes. Now immediately, people were contrasting Jesus' teachings with what they knew, the teachings of the scribes. And this is a rather odd, for authority is precisely what the scribes had. They could claim authority of the written word passed down through many, many generations. They had the authority of tradition. The Pharisees and Sadducees were interpreters of the law. They decided what and who was acceptable and what and who was not acceptable. They were part of the cultural power structure of the day. Their power was a given. But somehow, Jesus taught with authority surpassing all of these claims. He was the more authentic. There's a story of a, a great disaster at sea. A tourist boat loaded with cars and holiday makers had failed to shut the front door at the front of the bow of the boat. And as it moved away from the dock, water poured in and the boat began to sink and panic sent in. And as you can imagine, people were screaming as the happy atmosphere of the ship turned in minutes to something worse than a horror movie. And all at once, one man, and he wasn't a member of the crew, he seemed to take over. In a clear voice, he gave orders, telling people what to do. Relief mixed with panic as the people realized someone at least and at last was in charge, and many managed to reach the lifeboats they would otherwise have missed in the dark. The man himself made his way down the stairs in the boat to where people were trapped below. He then formed a human bridge, holding on with one hand to a ladder and the other hand to the part of the ship that was nearly submerged. He enabled still more people to cross to safety. And when this nightmare was over, the man himself was found to have been drowned. He'd literally given his life in using the authority he had assumed, the authority by which many had been saved. This man, he had a compelling authority all of his own, unlike those who may be in charge, like the captain or the hands, because they have a powerful, in this case, history and training behind them, but at Jesus' time, a powerful army and a dictator behind them. But they lack genuine authority in the hearts and minds of the people. The apartheid government may have had the power in South Africa for many, many years, but it was a jailed man, Nelson Mandela, who had the authority. As Jesus was teaching in this quiet Galilean village synagogue, 
all of a sudden he encountered a man possessed with an unclean or impure spirit. In biblical lingo, lingo, impure means contrary to the sacred, and all that is against the sanctity of God is considered impure. Speaking through the man's tormented mind, the unclean spirit, and some would use the term evil spirit or demon, cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? And Jesus' words and actions were a resounding yes. With words, Jesus issued a a rebuke and order. He flung the stern, authoritative words, be silent and come out of him at those spirits. And these words demanded action. And with a shrill cry, you can just imagine the piercing cry of these spirits, the man convulsed and they left his body. The loud scream reverberating throughout the synagogue gave evidence to the intensity of that conflict between the man's body and these demons and the magnitude of what Jesus had just done. Jesus, God's word, had stepped up against the forces that thought to cripple, distort, and even destroy a human life. And with a few words, he freed the man and sent that unclean spirit packing. Jesus' words had pierced to the heart. In that startling moment, the people in the synagogue began to realize Jesus was announcing in no uncertain terms, God has entered the battle and he is in charge. From the onset of his gospel, Mark is letting us know what, that no oppressive boundary will stand against or withstand the exousia, the power of Jesus. One scholar, G.W. Charles, wrote, while the crowd is awed by his teaching, the readers, you and I, are perplexed at how no one except the demons seem to understand that the boundary between heaven and earth had been pierced and the reign of God was at hand. The readers of Mark are invited to follow Jesus into a whole new world, or as Brian Blount, a New Testament scholar, wrote, into Mark's world of Jesus walking around, possessed by the power of the Spirit of God. I think it's important to remember that Mark was writing at a very difficult time, a time and oppression of oppression and persecution for Jews and Christians, everyone living in that region. And some believe that this story was included by Mark because he wanted people to see Jesus as a strong opponent to the forces that paralyzed human life at that time. That's important for us to hear as well. I mean, after a long week of struggling to make ends meet, of struggling with the demands of work, with the demands of children at home these days, and the demands of COVID-19, we need to hear words of assurance and confidence and hope and power so that when we hear ourselves and others telling us, it's no use, I just can't do it, we can turn to the words of scripture. There we hear the words of Paul telling us, I can do all such things through Christ who strengthens me. Or when you hear the words, I'm alone, there I, no one but me, Christ's words assure us that lo, I am with you always. With these words, our lives are strengthened and given direction. When Jesus spoke, demons fled. Storms ceased, the sick were healed, opponents were silenced, the dead were raised, and the crowds, well, they were astonished. There's a poster, and I saw it the other night when I was watching a show on Netflix. You may have seen it. It's of a 1920s hitman with a machine gun and a big cigar, double-breasted pinstripe suit, and he's standing there holding the gun, and he says, if you don't walk the walk, then don't talk the talk. Suggesting words alone aren't good enough. That they must be accompanied by action if they're to have authority. And we all know Jesus didn't just talk the talk. He walked the walk all the way to the cross. In his cry, it is finished. He dispels the lost ways of the past and launches us into a new beginning, a new reality of God's kingdom here on earth. It's not a cry of despair, but one of victory cry of promise and hope. As we move through life, sickness, grief, pain, 
sorrow and death confront us. As with the man in the synagogue at Capernaum, these troubles, these evils, they torment us. King Zedekiah asked Jeremiah, tell me, is there any word from the Lord? And we too ask if there is any word from the Lord for our struggles. And the answer is yes, there is a word, Jesus Christ, God's very word to people on earth, born in Bethlehem, growing up in Nazareth, traveling through Galilee, healing the sick, forgiving the sinful, walking straight to Jerusalem, dying on the cross, rising in the resurrection, defeating death and pouring out his spirit on his followers. Now sense the exhilaration of the truth of it. Jesus is always with us. We have the powerful world word of Christ with us, the word that he abides with us so that nothing, nothing in death, life, or creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God. So when life seems to drag you into its shadows, and for many of us at this time, it can feel that way, we can cling to the strong words of our Christ who defeated evil, exercised demons, and cured the ill. These powerful words of Christ say to us, because I live, you shall live also. Amen.
service continues with the words of the Nicene Creed. Let us confess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Drawn here by God, let us bring to him our concerns for the church and the world in prayer, responding to Lord in your mercy with hear our prayer. <clears throat> we pray that the church may be a vibrant sign of God's life in every generation and locality, serving, listening, and loving with the human face of ordinary people lit with the brightness of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> we pray for our brothers and sisters in the Anglican Communion, for Egregia Episcopal Anglicana do, do Brazil, for the Provincial Synod of the Ecclesiastical Province of Canada, for the First Nations clergy who serve the communities of the Diocese of the North. We pray for Grace Church on the Hill and its support of the Churches on the Hill Food Bank, the provision of meals for out of the cold programs, refugee resettlement work, and the support of Indigenous ministries. For Grace Church Markham, its monthly lunch, its participation, in the Pekanga Cum Water Project, and education and advocacy on Indigenous and right relations issues. And for Grace Church Scarborough, with its monthly community lunch and cooking club, and its support of the Good Food Box, and for Eglinton Deanery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that the world's attention may be refocused on what is of a lasting value, that in humility, all in authority may hear the real needs, honor them, and act on them. We pray this week, Lord, for the United States of America that begins a new era of leadership. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that all the households and neighborhoods represented here may be alerted to the signs of glory around them in the ordinary daily miracles and come to welcome Jesus as Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that all who are searching for God may realize his closeness to them. The wrong lives may be courageously healed and damaged lives mended. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for and thank you for health and strength, and pray now for your help and healing 
wherever people ache with pain and sorrow, loneliness or fear. Bless them in their need and surround them in their and surround them with love. We pray especially for Hilda, Paul, Jim, Jane, June, Gregory, Tom and Susan, Dorothy, Joyce, Ed, Tony, John, and Shirley, Alan, Vernon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that the dying may know your presence and be safely led through that last journey to the peace and joy of eternal life. We pray that we may all one day experience God's heaven. The ombre candle today is given in loving memory of Jocelyn Scott and Sergeant Matthew Scott. And the altar flowers are given to the glory of God and in loving memory of Helen Cowie from her daughter Peggy Ann and son-in-law Bob Winterton and their grandchildren Peter and Heidi and husband Brian Rampersand and great-grandchildren Jason and Alyssa. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that we may become increasingly aware of God's amazing love for each of us until our hearts are overflowing with thankfulness and praise. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. So with you. love may our offering this day by the power of your Holy Spirit 
renew us for your service. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you, also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, mighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living word through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your wills, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All honor and glory are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church now and forever. Amen. And as our Savior taught us, let us pray together, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace.
bless you and keep you and bring his joy to your life. Let us pray. Source of all goodness, in this Eucharist, we are nourished by the bread of heaven and invigorated with new wine. May these gifts renew our lives that we may show your glory to all the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Amen. And together let us say, glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, to the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Now, I hope you are all well. We are, what, almost into our third week of lockdown. I know it's difficult for some, especially for parents who are home with children and who have to be schooled, as well as the parents working. It's a difficult and challenging time for all of us. Know that our prayers are with you. And if for any reason you might want to talk, don't hesitate to call. I would look forward to speaking to you at any point. Just call the church. I'll give you the number very quickly, but it's 905-279-2304. If you really need or want to talk, I'm more than happy to talk with you. And I hope you have a good week and that blessings come to you throughout this week. And that, and quite honestly, it is not too difficult a week. And we continue to pray that the numbers of COVID cases go down. And this blessing is for you. Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with peace and goodwill, and to make you partakers of the divine nature. And the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. to the Lord 
the king of creation. Oh, my soul, praise him, for he is thy health and salvation. Oh, ye who hear, brothers and sisters, draw near. Praise him in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord, who o'er all things so wondrously reigneth, shelters thee under his wings, ye so gently sustaineth. Hast thou not seen how thy entreaties have been granted in what he ordaineth? Praise to the Lord who when tempests their warfare are waging, who when the elements madly around thee are raging, biddeth them cease, turneth their fury to peace, whirlwinds and waters assuaging. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.